Hi there, and welcome to Coffee with Phil, where our goal is to help you live a life of purpose on purpose. Walking with God sounds easy, but how many of you know it never follows the scripture prepared? In this podcast, Phil shares stories from his personal journey in the hopes that his experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly, will help you as you walk with God on your own journey. Grab your coffee and enjoy this practical and personal episode with your podcast host, Phil Strong. Well, good day and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Coffee with Phil, and I'm your host, Phil Strong, and I'm delighted to be hanging out with you this afternoon uh, and sharing what I think might be a little bit more of a prophetic uh, kind of episode than I would normally do. I've just got some stirring in my bones as the great... Uh, author of the uh, message would say in his uh, biography, which he didn't write because he was dead, but um, Eugene Peterson, who wrote the message, uh, his biography that I have on my shelf uh, is because of the burning in my bones. And uh, I loved it. I loved the story of his life and his journey through um, shepherding uh, his church and um, and obviously what was the culmination of his ministry, I believe, was the legacy he left through his poetic interpretation of scripture, which is the message. Uh, and some people argue about whether it's a legitimate, valid, authorized translation, and I don't even get into those arguments. Uh, I just say, you know what, I like reading it. And uh, it's not that I don't read an authorized translation. I like multiple translations. Anyway. Well, I sidetrack, I divert. Uh, Eugene Peterson, thank you for your service, and I pray you're dancing with Jesus. Well, I'm sure you are. Hey, um, episode 88, uh, I was speaking to my team this afternoon saying, look, I've got a real commitment to get uh, through to episode 100 before the end of this calendar year, and then i um, going to rethink uh, what's going on. I might try a few different things between now and then. Uh, so keep following the episodes and watch out for the different way that we might share life together, share our faith journey together. We want faith to be made real. My dream uh, with uh, just sharing my journey is that we would live a life of purpose, on purpose, together. And uh, together is really a theme of what's going on in me at the moment. Um, I'm preparing this week to preach a message on Sunday at our gathering and uh, it'll be about being together. Uh, I wrote an article several weeks ago for the local newspaper, which will be published tomorrow, uh, and it's about being together. And uh, today, I want to talk about being together. So, uh, looking forward to it. Um, sitting here in my office, enjoying my licorice tea at the end of the day. Uh, it's well late, then uh, much, much later than I would normally do this. But got home and just felt I needed a bit of fresh air and I wanted to catch up with Kathy. So I was like, hey, look, why don't we why don't we go for a walk now before it gets too cold? Take the dog around the block, have a bit of fresh air and, and just catch up on our day. And so that's what we did. And I'm really glad we did. It's kind of a reset in the afternoon, the late afternoon to do that. Uh, and then why would I sit in my office when it's cold instead of doing it when it's sunny? So, uh, yeah, look, the excitement of my life. Uh, Thanks for being on the journey. And today, episode 88. Coffee with Phil, episode 88. I hope you've got a decent coffee there. Uh, I just roasted some beans for tomorrow. Uh, They're sitting uh, next to my coffee grinder, just just, uh, resting before we put them to work tomorrow. But... um, I hope you've got a good coffee. I hope you've got a decent coffee. Um, I was just in Wellington for a conference earlier this week, and uh, one of the guys traveling with me, he says, oh, he said, I'm so confident that we'll find decent coffee because I've got you that we're traveling with. And of course, we managed to find a couple of decent cafes that have decent beans. Uh, Beans is the trick to decent coffee, friends. Any idiot can make a good coffee with a good bean, Uh, but even a bad bean, it's really, really hard to make a good coffee. Anyway, we won't get into that debate. What do we want to do today? I want to talk to you this prophetic sense I've got. I've been speaking at length with people, uh, podcasting, preaching about them moving into a new spiritual season. I just get a sense uh, that the unsettling that we're noticing around about and the, the shifting of people... Um, the transitioning that's going on, uh, we are literally in a new spiritual season. Of that I'm convinced. I have a deep conviction that God has um, 
turned over the page and inward we go. And uh, even the other day, we were praying in a in a meeting together, and I just felt the Lord say, you know, uh, first of the month, first of a new season. And uh, it was a prophetic thing rather than literally a calendar. So um, here's the point in the new spiritual season. I want to speak to you today. The title of our podcast, as you might have seen on the player, is Cull or Cultivate Connections. And in the prophetic uh, sense that I have uh, just around the season, I, I felt the Lord say to me uh, just in this past week as I was traveling uh, that the season we're moving into will require attention to connection. So, friend, I want you to pay attention to connection. And uh, there's an urgency in this. So, I'm sharing this more as a, a prophetic update than. Um, than anything else, but I, I, I'm sharing it because this is what I feel the Lord calling me into, to, to have an awareness and an attention. And, and so sometimes when you read the scriptures, particularly in the prophet uh, writings in the Old Testament, you'll often notice that the language is, is presented in, in a sense of urgency. And, and in those days, the Lord would, Lord would often say through the prophet, he'd say, wake up, pay attention, behold, uh, for there is something I need you to hear, listen. And uh, Jesus himself used to say, let those who have ears, let them hear. Uh, So I'm saying, wake up, listener, wake up, uh, child of God, and listen. Pay attention to connection. And by connection, I'm talking about relationships. And uh, you can tell by the title that I've really got two things to speak about. uh, And it's really, do you want to choose A or B? Cull or cultivate connections. And this can get a little bit sensitive, I guess, because um, as I've spoken about in previous episodes, uh, we might put the link in the show notes because I just can't remember the episode number right now. So check the description. You know, we're always making sure there's a description for the episode that will help you with links to other useful information. So if I'm quoting scripture, if I'm quoting a book or a podcast or um, a reference um, then we'll we'll put the link for you down there. So check it out. But I've, I've podcasted this about before about about recognizing when you need to put boundaries in place between relationships and in fact shift boundaries in relationships. And that was a challenging episode for some, according to what I heard. But what I'm actually saying today is there are some relationships or connections that you have in your life that you need to pay attention to because the Lord is going to ask you to cull your connections, which means, you know, if you think about um, what a shepherd might do to a flock of sheep, they cull them and they separate them away from the others. And that's a vital, vital thing for us in this space is to think about how do we cull the connections, the relationships that we've got. And that's a pretty intense uh, instruction for me to give you uh, because you might think I'm being a bit harsh. But uh, I think uh, Jesus himself said, if you're not received, then shake the dust from your feet or from your robe and move on. So Jesus was very, very clear that we're to cull our relationships when the cause is necessary. And I'll, I'll reference that in a minute. But let's talk about what it means to cultivate. So in quite the opposite sense, um, I feel the Lord saying, you know, when you're paying attention to connection, you'll either cull, which means to remove, or to cultivate, which means to enhance, cultivate. So you're you're helping something to flourish, you're investing in, you're building stronger, you're um, uh, edifying and fortifying. So, so really what we're saying is when you pay attention to connection, you're either going to cull and remove those lifeless relationships that are not for the season to come. Uh, and let me just be very, very clear here. We're not judging people. We're not condemning people. Uh, and we're certainly not hurting people. But what we are doing is recognizing that in different seasons, the Lord calls us to walk in different directions. So that's cull. Now, cultivate is about strengthening things. So I want to speak a little bit about how we might do that uh, at the close of this podcast, because I've, I've got, um, you know me, I'm Bible geeking again. I've got four scripture references that I want to speak to today. And again, we will put these references in the, in the description below to help you. Uh, so because if you're driving, you're not going to really look these up on your phone or, or write them down. So 
And I wouldn't want you to fall off the treadmill if you're currently exercising. So um, here we go. We're going to do four things and then we're going to do a so what at the end. So come on a journey. We're going to cull or cultivate connections as part of this new shift we've got going into the season ahead of us spiritually as the Lord leads us. Righty, righty, righty. I'm just enjoying my, excuse me, I, I've got my licorice tea I'm enjoying. Oh, love me a licorice tea at the end of the day. Uh, so the first um, set of references I've got here, so this is A, I've got A, B, C, D. And I've actually had a bit of a recalibrate. So I prepared some notes. Uh, then, like I said, went for a walk with Kathy, and then I sat down and I just felt a check in my spirit. So I'm going to share it in one direction and then share it in another, but make a key point. And I'm going to leave you to process it. There's a really common saying uh, amongst Christians. They quote a Bible verse and they say, you know, if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000. And the concept is good. And I'm going to reinforce the concept because the concept is really with God, uh, we can be much, much stronger. And, and in fact, um, this is a direct quote from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 32 and verse 30. Moses is not citing a historical event. He, what he's doing is he's using a Hebrew teaching method as he is writing uh, the book of Deuteronomy, which is kind of like his, his final sermon quite a long sermon, I must say. But as he's doing this and communicating to the people of Israel, he's using exaggeration to make a point. So he's exaggerating that one can put a thousand, two can put 10,000. It's a multiplier. It's a multiplier that is the principle that Moses is communicating to the people. Now, it's a good point. It's a very good point. But if we understand the context, and this is where I got a check in my spirit this afternoon as I sat down with my licorice tea to spend time with you, and you look in the context of Deuteronomy 32, Moses is actually speaking about the enemies of God's people, and he's actually saying, these are your enemies, and if they were wise, they would understand. How could one of them chased a thousand of you and two put 10,000 to flight unless their rock, capital R meaning God, had given them up. For their rock is not as our rock. Our enemies are by themselves. So I just want to um, acknowledge the context of the phrase, one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. Firstly, the, the purpose of Moses is to say that there is a principle that God uses around multiplication. And it's a good point, And I want to reinforce the point. But I also just wanted to acknowledge that in the, in the actual literal quote, uh, uh, Moses is speaking about the enemy. But there is a genuine reference in the beginning of Leviticus 26. So it's not in isolation. And, and, and this is what validates it for me rather than disproves the Christians that think one can put a thousand to flight, then two can put 10,000. It's absolutely legitimate in my personal belief. And, and if we go to Leviticus, I mean, who reads Leviticus for devotional reasons? Oh, here we go. Leviticus 26, uh, the beginning in the English Standard Version um, has a heading. It says, Blessings for Obedience. And in the midst of the first uh, bunch of verses, there's 13 verses in the first section, the Lord is, is saying, I will give you peace in the land, and this is blessings, if you walk in my statutes and observe my commandments and do them, the Lord says. So if you follow in my ways, if you live as a, as a member of the covenant relationship that we have, this is old covenant, but it is for God's people. So let's not write it off. The Lord says, I will give you peace in the land and you'll lie down and no one will make you afraid. And then it says in verse um, 7, you shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword. Five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall chase 10,000 and your enemies shall fall before you 
by the sword. I will turn to you and make you fruitful and multiply and confirm my covenant with you. What's my point? In this passage, the Lord God is reaffirming that his design is that we would work together in partnership for great purposes. So what I am saying to you, I really get the sense that the Lord is saying, come on, come together, because in this new season, we've got to pay attention to connection. And in this, the Lord says, I will use partnership for great purposes, but I will use the partnerships I choose. Just because you have walked in partnership with one does not mean that you should continue to walk in partnership in the season. And that is why the Lord is leading us to review, to pay attention, and in review, that we might cull connections. And I want to move on to the second reference to speak about this specifically. The best example that comes to mind, and there are several, but the best example is Paul and Barnabas. And so you can hear me clicking as I turn my Bible to the end of Acts chapter 15. So here we go. Jump into the reference. Uh, so in Acts chapter 13, there was a, a setting apart of uh, Saul, who then very quickly became Paul, and Barnabas. And the, the apostles prayed, and, and it seemed good to us in the Holy Spirit that we should send them on their way. And so they prayed, they laid hands, they anointed, and they sent them on mission. And they had a great glorious time in the Holy Spirit as they traveled and expounded the gospel message of Jesus, and they saw people radically saved out of paganism. But um, they came back and they had a debrief and and they, and they, they, they had a good time with the church back in Jerusalem. But then Paul said to Barnabas, let us go, this is right at the end of Acts 15, um, scroll down, let, it, let us return where we proclaim the Lord. Now Barnabas wanted to take with them John Mark. Now John Mark had originally abandoned them on their first trip. And Paul thought it best not to take him because he had withdrawn. He'd run away. He'd chickened out. It was, uh, look, it was one of his weaker moments. And John Mark, the beautiful story, redeems himself later uh, and restores himself to Paul. Fantastic story. But it says in verse 39, there rose a sharp disagreement so that they separated from each other. Barnabas did take John Mark with him and sailed to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. What's the point? Sometimes the Lord calls you to take your partnership and go in different directions. So what I want to focus on here is is just the acknowledgement that some partnerships are for a lifetime. Some partnerships are for a season. And some partnerships are just for a moment. You know, uh, in in my uh, journey in ministry, I get disappointed, which is my own fault, because I mistakenly hope that some of my friendships and ministry will last a lifetime, and then people move on. And the Lord has had to remind me and and uh, deal with me in, in recognizing and submitting to his purposes that some of those partnerships were just for a season. And that's what's happening here. So so in Paul and, and Barnabas separating, they, now they separated because of a disagreement, but, it, but they both went on in ministry. So um, I, would, I would assume from that that they didn't fall away from the work that God gave them to do. So here's the point. We want to ask God, what do you have for me in the coming season? What do you have for me? in this relationship and who do I need to walk with? And this is very much God-led. So when I'm saying to you, cull connections, what I'm not saying is get rid of the people you don't like, you're bored with, or you just can't stand. That's not what I'm saying. It's about a separation of a new way to look at the relationship, but not so much in partnership. And I've had a few of these happen recently, where it's been a very much a loving, respectful, amicable parting of ways in partnership without forsaking the friendship. Uh, So I'm not calling you to judge people. Now, there have been other instances where people have um, chosen to separate, walk away and have nothing to do with. Uh, And and that that is something that happens from time to time. I'm acknowledging it. 
and I'm saying sometimes God is in it. And the example of Paul and Barnabas is, Barnabas is, uh, is a very, very good example of that. So if we're going to cull relationships, we need to be led by God. So ask God, are the, is this a specific relationship that you would like me to, to shift? And by shift, I'm using cull, the connection. Hmm. My tea's getting cold because I'm talking too much. Um, so that was B. I now want to move to C. So A, B, C. And uh, in my Bible here, I'm going to uh, move to Philemon. Philemon is a letter that Paul writes in, uh, uh, to his friend who, guess what his name is? <laughs> Philemon. And it's, there's just one book, uh, one chapter in this book, sorry. Uh, so in um, the Philemon, Paul's writing this letter to his friend. And he's writing about uh, a, a slave called Onesimus who ran away from Philemon. He did a runner. Now, in these days, slavery was accepted and even accepted in Christendom because you see Paul acknowledge slavery and saying, if you are a slave, that you are to work as if you're working for the Lord. And, and this guy Onesimus ran away, so he, he really he, he, he did the wrong thing. But he somehow found himself at the feet of Paul in Rome, and in that space he, was, um, he, he found salvation and he became like a son to Paul. And what Paul's done in this letter is he's, he's sent Onesimus back to his master with a blessing but with a request for reconnection. And uh, it's a real interesting letter. It's very short. It's only 25 verses, one page in your Bible. And, but in it, I want, I want to read verse 15 and 16. Because Paul says this, hear this. Paul says, perhaps, this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a bondservant, but more than a bondservant, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So let me just uh, um, paraphrase this for you to, to perhaps explain it. What Paul's saying is, look, the reason he came away was that he would find Christ, and perhaps that's why he was parted from you for a while, but now that you might receive him back, not as a slave, but as a brother, he's a brother to me, and I hope he would be to you. What's the point I'm trying to make here? Sometimes a separation can be a time of preparation. So in the connections you're cultivating, I'm prophesying that the Lord will be reestablishing connections, not as they were in the past, but in a brotherhood sense or in a in a faith-to-faith sense, a covenant connection and partnership for the purposes that God wants to work through those that have been transformed in the time that they've been away from you. I'm prophesying that, that there is a coming back, a reconnection because of the preparatory work that God has done in the hearts and the minds and the the spirit of people that have been away. And uh, I'm I'm excited about that because I I feel like the Lord is going to rekindle some of those connections and they're going to be just life-giving in a new way because as Paul said, don't receive him back as you had before as a bond servant or a slave, but receive him as a brother or a son as I have done. And so in the cultivation of your connections, anticipate God doing restorative work uh, and I'd love to hear about it. Uh, And I am certainly anticipating and looking out for it in, in my world. The final thing that I want to do, so A, B, C, D, we're now up to D, and I want to jump back to uh, 1 Samuel 18, which is the story of uh, David and his friend, his close, close friend, Jonathan. Jonathan is the son of Saul, King Saul. King Saul's trying to kill David, and um, but, but, but um, David has this kindred relationship with the son, who is uh, Jonathan. And right at the beginning, uh, oh, I'm in the wrong one. I typed the wrong number in my uh, little thing here. So 1 Samuel 18, maybe I'll turn the lights on my office, it might help me. Um, It it speaks of David and Jonathan's friendship. And uh, as soon as, um, as soon as he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. 
And and so what happened was Saul saw this brotherhood between David and Jonathan, and he brought David into his own home, uh, and then he he wanted him to serve in the house, and and it didn't actually go well for Saul, uh, but that's a different story. But what I'm trying to highlight here is that Jonathan made a covenant with David, verse three, because he loved him as much as his own soul. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe which means the royal robe, and gave it to David. And he even gave him his royal armor, and even his sword, and his bow, and his belt. And David went out and was successful. What's my point? There is a connection that comes when the Lord builds a covenant partnership. And I want, to, I want you to see in this the next level connection of devotion that Jonathan made to David, and David made to Jonathan. They were kindred. They were soul uh, mates. They were blood brothers. And uh, even as Saul tried to kill David, Jonathan would preserve his life. He would warn him. He would protect him. He would come back to him. And and these two loved each other. They cried uh, to each other. Um, but at, right at the end of uh, chapter 20, so 1 Samuel chapter 20, um, when there's a, 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 almost like a, a permanent parting here, Jonathan says, go in peace because we've sworn, saying the Lord shall be between us and between our offspring forever. And so they made this deep, deep, deep connection. And so what I'm prophetically saying to all of us is that as we come into this place where we're cultivating connections in this new season the Lord's leading us into, there's going to be a next level connection. So um, that's going to require vulnerability. It's going to require a new level of emotional health and spiritual maturity on your part. Uh, and it's also going to require you to make a commitment at a higher level than you possibly have done in the past. And so I'm prophetically saying to you to wake up and be careful, because if you miss it, you will miss the powerful partnership that the Lord is trying to establish in the connection in the new season for the fruitfulness he wants to bring in you and through you. So I'm I'm really calling us all to a higher sense of connection, and that will be within families. I I just really, as I'm closing this, I'm really sensing prophetically the Lord is saying, even within your natural family, the Lord is calling you to deepen the connection and enhance it to the next level, for the Lord is going to use blood connections for a new thing. And in addition to that, I'm, I'm prophesying a reconnection, a rekindling and a coming back together of those times of separation are over. And the Lord says he's calling people back together to build something new at a greater degree than has been done before. And it's only able to be done because the Lord has done a deep preparation in the time of separation. I'm also saying to you prophetically that there's been a a partnership that has a finite life. You must not overstay your time. And even as the Lord Jesus said, shake the dust off and move on because I have a new place for you to be fruitful. And then also finally just understand that there is a multiplication factor that the Lord has in our connections. So I invite you to get away and spend time with the Lord and actually say to him, what would you reveal to me? What would you say to me, Lord? I'm doing that, and I'd encourage you to do that, and I look forward to a a, a new sense of life as God builds connections for the sake of his purpose in our lives. So may we live a life of purpose on purpose. May we live our our life of faith um, made real and tangible and visible and fruitful as we partner with each other and we partner with God. So I'm going to sign off. I'm going to go and finish my cold cup of tea and uh, end my day. Uh, But I want to say I'm glad to be with you. I'm glad to hang out with you. Please come back and have coffee with Phil. Uh, There's a a, a prophetic sense growing in me for what God's doing, and I want to go on a journey with you. I want to share my journey with you, but more importantly, I want to do that with you. And so go out there, build connections the Lord leads you to, and be fruitful. God bless you, and I will catch up with you guys real, real soon.